Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, it's Sketch Monkey here. I'm back here in beautiful Colorado Springs and Winslow BMW because they just got this in. This is a 2024 BMW M4 competition convertible. As you can see, we have an inline six cylinder, three liter turbocharged with 503 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 in this thing, three and a half seconds and on to a top speed of 175 miles per hour. So what we're gonna do in this video is of course, we need to talk about this design. Yes, we're going to talk more about the front end. I'm going to do a couple of tweaks to the front end, changes that I would like to see that I think would make it into a more harmonious front end. Then we're going to talk about the side view and last but not least rear view before we jump into the interior. And then of course, we're going to take this for a drive. Starting with the front end design of the BMW M4 in general, I've made a lot of videos on this front end. And the weird thing about this convertible is I think for some reason, the, the front works better in a convertible setup for the M4, and I'm not sure why that is. I'm gonna try and figure that out when we look at the side view, but looking at the front end here, we still have these big grills, of course, this is not gonna change until the next generation of 4 Series come out. But I think in this color, it kind of blends in nicely, and you also have the blacked out inserts in the grill here itself with the M4 Competition logo right there. This is part of the active driver package, so this has a big radar down here in the left kidney. We don't have the exterior carbon fiber package on this one because if we did, we would have a carbon fiber wing going across here instead of this black mesh. These headlights are the laser light headlights that we have in this specific M4. Very beautiful with these blue touches on the inside. However, there are a couple of things in the front end that I would like to redesign. And I think it all comes down basically to one single corner. And that is this corner right here, because you see how this goes parallel. So parallel lines like this, it creates a very static feel for the design. Specifically when you're speaking of BMWs, they're supposed to have a lot more passion in the design in the front end. So what I wanna do, one change I wanna do is just add a radius to this section here. So we have a curvature going into this thin piece of body where we can have it be connected in not such a brutal way here with this line kind of crashing into it. Let's make it a curvature there. And that's one change I wanna do. Another change I wanna do is work on this in uh, this line here, not have it be uh, pointing inwards. I'm gonna play around a little bit, maybe have it point outwards like this. Last but not least, work a little bit and change a few key features in the, in the headlights themselves to make them feel a bit more defined than what they are right here. I think those changes, to the front end of the 4 Series in general on the M4 right here, I think the kidneys are not really the big problem with the front end design. It's the integration of the kidneys and the overall graphics in the front end. Coming up close to these laser light uh, uh, headlights that we have in the M4, they even have a warning label there to not look straight into the headlight, which would be uh, pretty common sense to me. But we have these thin LEDs, and these are also things that I would like to redesign and kind of have it be more a little bit more dynamic because they have the same thickness going all around it. But they look cool when you come in close like this. You can see the 3D effect. They almost look 3D printed. And as well with these blue accents inside, adding a bit of color pop in the internal pieces of the headlight. Coming around to the side view of the 2024 M4 competition convertible. And I think this looks absolutely gorgeous with the top down has classic convertible, four seat convertible proportions. And again, in addition with this aventurine red color, it just looks stunning. So what are we talking about when we uh, go into the wheels here? We have a staggered setup, meaning we have 20 inch wheels in the rear and we have 19s up in the front. I love the design of these wheels. They're not entirely black. We have these spokes, the, the faces of the spokes actually being gray to kind of make it pop a little bit more. If they were black, you would probably not even see the design right now on the camera. So I'm happy that they went with that on this specific spec. A couple of things though, when it comes to the 4 Series in general and the shoulder line here, it's very interesting what they did. If you look at the M3, for example, the M3 has one sharp line going across the entire length of the car into the corner of the, of the headlight from the corner of the taillight. But here in the M4, they decided to break the collarbone of the 4 Series. And what I mean by that is we have one sharp line going here, fades into this area, does not come back in the door. Instead, they jumped it down to this point, And here you have the second uh, line, shoulder line, 
going here, which then fades into this fender, coming back at the same height as we have in the front, but here in the rear. So it's broken in this area. I think it makes the side look weaker than what it should look like, in a, specifically in an M4. So what I would like to do in that area here is to just create one single shoulder line that goes straight, like we have in the M3, for example, from one point right here, straight back in one single line across the entire car. Another detail when it comes to the graphics of the side view of the M4 that I would like to redesign is if you look down here, hopefully this comes up on the camera, it's very sunny, it's a pretty dark color, so you can't really see the contrast here. But down here, we have the side skirt looking beautiful. But what I don't like is that if you look at from the front end of the car all the way through the side and into the rear the side of the diffuser back here, it's actually blacked out. What this does visually is it lifts the car up, so it makes it look, I mean, it doesn't look like an off-roader, but it looks like it has a higher ground clearance than what we could make if they were in the same color as the rest of the body. So what I want to do, have that be in body color to kind of bring the car and the mass and the volume of this car down closer to the ground visually by having the body color extend all the way to the furthest, the lowest part of the car. A couple more details here on the side that I love about the M4. I do like this uh, integration here of a non-functional graphic piece, but I kind of think it works in this case, it gives a, ho a nice housing for the M4 competition badge or logo right there in the middle. And we have, of course, the wings up here on the uh, side mirror. This is typical M fashion, as I'm sure you know. It looks good. Some people don't understand why they put those type of mirrors on the M cars, but I think it just separates it a bit more from uh, the rest of the A4 series. You also have the camera inside of the side mirror right there. And I love the red calipers. I'm not so sure if these red calipers work great with this burgundy aventurine color i would probably want to have these in a different color and not two sets of red on the same car now if you were to ask me what is your favorite view of the new m4 convertible it's definitely going to have to be the three-quarter rear view like we have here they absolutely nailed the design in the back here i love all the horizontal lines that we have in addition to the very long and horizontally shaped taillights adding width to this thing and we have a gorgeous chamfer up top here as well with the M4 competition badge right there and you have the camera actually mounted right there in the logo itself. Down here we have a proper M setup with the quad tailpipes with the bazooka to the tailpipes as well and this diffuser same thing here that I talked about in the side view I want to cut this diffuser right here and make it body colored this section because when we have it like this when we have the black piece extending to the side of the car and then wrapping around the entire car even in the front end as I said, it kind of lifts the car up, so let's have the diffuser be a completely separate part by cutting it here and this then being a part of the, of the rest of the body of the car. Overall, fantastic looking rear end by BMW. Again, I love the simplicity that we have in the rear and the side, and that's why I think the front end is um, looking a bit weird because it's so complex in the front while the side and the rear is very smooth and harmonious, so they kind of clash a little bit in that way. Overall, guys, I think this new M4 competition convertible is a really beautiful design. There's just a couple of tweaks with that, specifically that corner that I showed you in the front end that needs to change, and then we have a proper looking BMW. We've talked about the exterior, now it's time to have a look at the Silverstone interior here with the new BMW iDrive 8 system. Jumping in here, this is going to be the main reason why I would go for a 2023 model over the 2024. So much more prefer the BMW iDrive 7 system than the iDrive 8. The iDrive 8 comes with this, which is being more and more common in every single new BMW model. Still has the bracket back here. It, it, the integration of this just needs to be better, in my opinion. And it was perfect with the iDrive 7 system when you had it sort of integrated in a nice way like this and the gauge cluster within the housing. This looks a little too simplistic for me and right now when the sun is out, when it's top down, you're gonna have a ton of glare in the screen simply because there is no cap to cover the, the screens up. We do have the carbon fiber package on the interior, beautiful carbon fiber trim going all around the dash here and on the steering wheel as well. And you have carbon fiber right here in the middle. And you also have this flap, which is also carbon fiber to cover up the wireless charging and the two 
cup holders here with a 12 volt and a regular USB port next to the cup holders in the center stack here. This is probably something that you used to if you're new to new uh, used to newer BMWs. You have all the buttons here, traction control, the camera, the parking assist, automatic uh, engine shut off, on and off. You have the engine start stop, M mode and setup and the exhaust system here as well with the big button for the convertible top. And I think you can drive up to 30 miles per hour and do still manage the, uh, the, the top. And you have, of course, the touch screen up here, which you can use if you want to. You have all the settings for the, for example, the climate control. You need to go in unfortunately i would say to the system here to control that the only physical buttons you have are is the dot is the knob for the volume and some uh, tuning buttons and that's pretty much it however the vents are very nicely done very nicely integrated in the dash with a clean looking aluminum piece going around it and very easy to adjust just like we want to have for our vent in the middle you have a decent sized uh, compartment right here underneath the center armrest with a usb-c port beautiful silver stone interior i love these seats I think again, in this case, I would go with these seats instead of the ones that have a lot of carbon fiber on the, on the seat itself. This feels very nice to sit in. They hug you tight enough and they're also a lot more comfortable to get in and out of than the carbon fiber seats. And of course, we have a decent sized glove box right here. On the left side of the steering wheel, you have all the controls for the lighting settings and you have a small little compartment down here for store, maybe a couple of markers or something like that. Moving on to the gauge cluster, I love the design of the, the interface of the gauge cluster because it's the same, basically the same that you have in the i7. However, it is here out in the open and have a lot of glare in it graphics themselves going through the different drive modes it just looks very clean looking at the steering wheel this is the same steering wheel that they have i think in the m4 csl so we have the carbon fiber pedals which look at this they stick out both in the top and in the bottom perfect we have carbon fiber right here on the spokes as well controls for the radio settings and stuff like that and the cruise control on the left and the heated steering wheel button is located right here in a typical bmw fashion by itself down here at the third spoke on the wheel. It's not a flat bottom steering wheel, but I do like that we have the M stitching going all around it on the inside, which we don't have on the seats because the seats are just black and white, which I think looks pretty good. It would be cool to have some sort of M stitching somewhere on the doors and the seats as well. Now, this is technically a four seater convertible, but I'm not sure if any adults can fit back here. It looks pretty tight, but you still have a, some leg room, even if with, with my driving position back there, I'm 6'1", and you still can fit uh, maybe a kid up to 10 years old in these back seats. You also have the climate controls at the back of the armrest with some integrated vents as well, and two cup holders right there. We talked about the exterior. We did, we did a couple of changes to it. We talked about this gorgeous interior. Now it's time to fire this three liter inline six up and let's hear what this sounds like in sport mode all righty guys setting off in the convertible 2024 m4 competition 503 horsepower under the hood and i'm in manual everything in sport Sounds so good. <laughs> this is a nice car to have as a uh, convertible because I, I think the audio is still pumped in here, but you still hear the exhaust a lot better when, of course, uh, we don't have a roof on this thing. It pulls like crazy. We have a eight speed automatic transmission. And uh, as I said, a three liter inline six turbocharged. The torque is pretty good too. 470 pound feet of torque, not bad at all with the 503 horsepower. Zero to 60, three and a half seconds and onto a top speed of 175 miles per hour. So as I'm sitting in here right now, it's getting a little overcast. It's so much glare in the screen that I don't understand why this is the new trend right now. I just don't see any benefit to having this setup that we have here compared to the uh, iDrive 7, which I definitely prefer over this because there's so much glare, I, even in the gauge cluster. I, I, the, the contrast is kind of washed out just because we don't have a cap on top of it.
what BMW does so well is just the handling and the cornering in these things, even in their big SUVs. It's just fantastic. I would still say that this is the ultimate driving machine. Even though we have all the tech, you can say what you want about the front end. I think a couple of tweaks as I just showed you in the front end just transforms the grill and the intakes and everything because I don't think that the grills themselves are the problem. It's actually the, just the, uh, the integration of the grills in the overall um, uh, layout of the front end. Love that we have the shift lights right there looking great because they're right there in your field of view with the rev counter being the major uh, graphic detail that you see when you're sitting here driving in uh, sport mode. Makes it very easy to just know when to shift. You can also hear it, obviously. So what about the pricing for the M4 Competition convertible? It starts at around $105,000 for the very base model. And then, of course, goes up from there, depending on what type of uh, packages you choose for it. And honestly, I think it's a pretty decent deal. What a great day today to be driving an M4 convertible. It's, uh, what's the temp? Where do I see the temp in here? Not sure, but it's, yeah, right there. It's 73 degrees out. Like the sun here in Colorado just feels, I don't know how to put it, but it feels stronger or warmer than Florida. Maybe because we are a couple of thousand feet closer to it. I don't know, but 73 feels like 80 in Florida and I really like it. It's super nice. Air is not as humid as we had in the Florida sunshine as well. So it's a nice day to be reviewing a convertible today. Not a good thing about the traction here is that you have, of course, X drive. So we have all wheel drive with the M4 competition. And I think that's good. That's something that I would like to have here in Colorado. I can drive this year round. Just add the, uh, just put the top up and you should be good to go all year round if you wanted to. All right, so let's do one last pull here and see what this got. Hey, <laughs> I love BMW M cars. They still have it. They still have that special touch when it comes to performance. These pedals, perfectly laid out uh, they, they're exactly this, the length I want them to be and you, they stick up at the top and at the bottom so you can clearly see where they are at all times and they're attached to the steering wheel so if you keep your hands at the same position you're always gonna have the paddles right behind uh, behind the wheel huge thanks to Winslow BMW as always here in Colorado Springs for providing this vehicle for me to review for you guys if you're interested in a new BMW, if you're interested in this beauty right here, go and check out their full inventory. They have a lot of cool cars right now. I'm just about to go and review a BMW Z4, a 2023 in gorgeous Thunder Night Purple up next. So check out their website at winslowbmw.com. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.